is La Salle d'Amoise, which is not far from where I live in uh, France. That um, If you put a pin in the centre of France, that's where I am. So it's a nice little um, town and uh, we actually stay in our camper van by the river here quite a few times. So I have painted this scene on plein air. So let's go to the painting. So this is the, uh, the drawing that I've done that I've tried to keep it fairly loose that, um, but fairly accurate as well that um, I, I went over it quite lightly first to get it all fairly accurate and then I've just pressed a little bit harder so you can actually see the, uh, the pencil marks. Um, I have painted the scene before but in portrait um, so I have more height on it but I thought I'd give it another try landscape and focus more on this sort of um, part of the town and less of the bridge. So we'll see how that works. Use the Escoda size 14, so a fairly big brush to start with. Now let's get um, the first wash on. So I'm going to start with some yellow ochre, but uh, fairly thin, not too much paint. And the reason being is that I need contrast from the, uh, the sky against the buildings here. And you'll notice I'm putting a, quite a bit of water on here because I want, um, want it to mix on the paper. So clean that brush off and we'll go in with some cobalt blue. But again, nice and thin. And I quite often start um, paintings this way that I want to have a, a kind of a summery feel to them. That uh, they'll actually be more more yellow than blue. But uh, I shall keep this area here nice and light so we'll get maximum contrast. So I think we've got the sunlight coming in this way. So let's go nice and warm along the bridge there. And that will uh, bring it uh, a little bit forward as well. And I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do down here with the water so We'll figure that out as we go. Uh, maybe we'll just put some something down here. You might actually not need to do a lot to, a lot with the water. And let's just put something on there. So already with the water and so on I put on there, it's starting to run down and give me some interesting effects. So we'll let that dry. So we're off to a good start, I think, because the, the sky's gone quite well, that uh, we've got a nice uh, bit of granulation and the sort of the, the blue that fades into this uh, sort of yellow, you know, with the nice gradation there. And obviously we've got maximum contrast against here. Let's go to Perla size 14. This scene is quite busy in the fact that, um, you know, there's one, two, three, four, five possible be buildings here in the, in the sort of centre of focus, but I'm just going to paint them as one shape. And these, this row of houses in the distance, again, I'll just paint that loosely and just treat it as one shape and treat this as one shape as well. So simplify, that's the, the secret to painting watercolours, I think. That um, took me a long time to realise that I probably would have painted these houses in the distance with the detail, painted all the, the windows and the doors and all the little details. Um, but what happens is it tends to come forward and detract away from the, the main area here. So literally, I can just maybe suggest a window, a uh, couple of windows maybe, leave a few bits of light. And that's that row of houses sorted. And that's all we need for that. And then over here, that um, they're perhaps receiving a little bit of sunlight. So let's start with a bit of warmth. Maybe show that uh, colour of the roof on there. But again, we don't want to detract away from what uh, what's going on. So just a bit of water there maybe. 
Yeah, that's quite nice. We've got cool and warm either side. So I want a hard edge here, so I'll need to wait for this to dry before I paint anything here. So I suppose we could do the tree on this side. So that's receiving a bit of sunlight on the top of the tree here as it comes across. That um, although it's green, I try to avoid doing too much green. I think it looks better if we uh, just keep in harmony that harmonious colours. So we'll have yellows, browns, and some uh, warm against cool. So we can go darker over here. And I'm painting this wet into wet. And this brush does come to a fine point, which you know why I tend to do everything with it because it's doesn't necessarily need a, any other brushes, but just a few little suggestion of some twigs and things, that's fine. And well, while we're there, let's bring a shadow across here. I'm just going to throw a bit of water on here just to keep it nice and moist because we may need to work on this area again. So if we can keep this area wet, that'll be good. So we'll leave a little bit of sparkle there. And to add connection, let's just pull that across. And uh, we'll leave that for the moment because I'm not quite sure what we're going to do down here. But uh, it perhaps depends on what happens here to what we do down here. But this is probably dried sufficiently now so we can start working on here. It's, the purple's quite nice, so I think I'll stick with the purple on here, but uh, you know we don't have to use the colours that are there. So a bit of cobalt blue, a bit of crimson. Maybe we'll grey it off a little bit with some of this raw sienna. So kind of a purpley grey. Nicely loaded up brush. So this is where we need a fine point to do these bits of detail. Which I'm going to put my hand in there. So although there is um, light hitting the side of here, sort of showing the shape of it, I think it probably will look better if I just paint it a little bit more simply. We'll see. A bit of blue. Just let it mix on the, on the paper. Just have it a little bit lighter there and it's good to experiment while you're when you're doing your paintings and see what might work so there's a bit of a shadow comes down here so i'm just using clean water and this is where the the bead of water is your friend and again is the secret to uh, painting loose looking watercolors and by the bead, I mean this little well of water here. It keeps the painting alive. It gives you the control to uh, go around these shapes. So I shall leave a few little highlights on there. And that comes down here. So maybe I'll, I'll do some of the color changes on these buildings but do it while it's wet so they'll just all uh, melt into each other but, uh, I think I was it's quite a few years ago I think I tackled this on location and I made the mistake of just painting painting it all as individual buildings and it just didn't work so I learnt from my mistakes, and that's the best way to, to learn watercolours, is to paint and make mistakes. That um, keeping it simple, and where you can, treat it as one shape, do it. But, uh, this is all just going to melt into the next. So this is where it's important to have plenty of paint on your brush. 
and that we can have a little bit of light on the top of this one. And let's try some of that blue along there. But again, paint it wet into wet, let it mix on the paper. So all these are interesting effects we're getting here. And it's important not to fight it, let it do its thing. So we're getting a good combination of cool and warm. It's a slightly more red along here. A little bit lighter in tone, because this is where the light is hitting these buildings. Let's go nice and dark side. So I'm going to mix a really strong dark, so thick paint. Let's do it over here in a different well with this not a lot of water. So blue and brown, maybe a touch of red. So this is pretty much paint straight from the tube. So I'm just going to put these darks in. That's just the eaves under the church there, maybe a window, I can suggest that window. A little bit of detail there. And then before it dries, let's, let's do the roof here. So again, nice and light on this side. Just use some clean water there. Then it gets darker on this side. And if you don't want it to mix, you can always just leave a little bit of a highlight. But I think on this occasion, it's better just to let it mix on the, the paper. I think that's a little bit too red. So let's add some blue onto that. So, so far so good, just let that run down, use that to paint the shadow of that house, put all that one in shadow, concentrate the light maybe on there. So this is letting the watercolour do its job, let it do the work. Same over here. Maybe it gets a little bit darker on this side. And just help that down. cooler over this side. But again, it needs to be connected. So, got the connector there, and just a bit of water there. So, again, before it dries, it's thick paint straight from the tube. I'm just mixing lots of different colours there just to get the dark. So we've got that window there, the dark in there, there's a window there, window there. And if you get those in while it's damp like this, they'll just soften and they're there, but they're not going to dominate the scene. Use that. It's quite far away, just a suggestion of that chimney. And then these windows, shutters, they're red, but they're in um, shadow, so it's just going to be a very dark red. But again, put them in while it's wet, they'll just melt. 
maybe those ones on the front are going to be catching the sunlight so they're going to be a little bit brighter I think we can probably go a little bit darker with this but uh, if you get it first off it would look better but uh, let's just do a wash over that just to make it a little bit darker better and while that's wet let's connect it to the bridge so we can suggest a bit of stonework going across there we'll continue that to warmth and maybe just a bit of dry brush just to suggest texture of the stone this was the the part i'm not quite sure what to do with the down here so let's just go for mixing up a nice dark at least get the uh, the darks of these uh, archways in again a nice bit of contrast Maybe let's just put some water on here. And there's actually a shadow being cast. Let's just pull that shadow across there. So it's all there. Uh, about trying to figure it out with watercolour but you've only got one shot at it so you've got to try and get it to get it right so there's actually a shadow across this bridge which let's just make more of that Too light the windows there, so we just need just to uh, darken those, but maybe just a just a little bit of blue. It's actually turned out to be quite a colourful, colourful painting. And I find with windows, it's best not to paint them perfect; just treat them uh, nice and loose. So just before this dries, let's put in the dark under the eaves again, where it's faded away. So I think it'd be good to get a nice dark there. But uh, be careful that we don't uh, lose that uh, fresh painterly look we've got. I think it's probably a good stage to let that dry. The in the photograph, the um, lantern was more over here, but obviously we wouldn't better see it, so I've moved it over here and I put one here as well. So I don't think we actually need a lot to finish this painting now. But, um, so nice dark, some thick paint. Instead of black, I tend to go for like a real dark sort of maroon colour or something like that, maybe. It's a bit more interesting. So we don't need masses of detail, just enough information to let us know that it's a lantern. So there's one. Obviously, this one is further away, so it's a little bit smaller. Well, we've got some dark paint. Let's um, suggest something in the sky here. Just a few of those. So I suppose we could, we could add some figures in that are uh, walking across the bridge. I think there's a, a restaurant just over the bridge here, so perhaps they're heading there. So we've got a nice area of light here. So here's a perfect spot for a figure. We're only going to see their head and shoulders. A couple of people there stopped having a bit of a chat. 
and we've got a bit of that highlight there so a good opportunity to uh, have another figure or two so obviously you get people just stopping at the bridge and looking over so we don't have to go go mad just a, a few there so this is nine inch by 12 inch and that's on Saunders and Waterford 140 pound knot so quite pleased with that one it uh, worked quite well 